Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Shoke and this is going to be one of those videos. No, I don't mean that it's going to be a rant video. I'm not going to be yelling angrily or whatnot, but what I mean is it's going to be one of those videos where I feel like this should not have to be explained. This should be pretty self-explanatory. This should be pretty blatant and clear. But we have people who just can't take the blinders off and see things for what they are. Um, and obviously, like the title says, um, you know, this is one of the biggest things plaguing Nintendo right now, if not the biggest thing uh, plaguing Nintendo right now, and ties in with the whole Federation Force thing and, um, you know, uh, Paper Mario Color Splash, whatever it's called, you know, that. Um, those two games that got announced, you know, not, not announced, but, you know, shown during the Direct and all the controversies surrounding these games. Because, you know, after the Paper Mario game was shown, after Federation Force was shown for the first time since E3 again, uh, I've seen a lot of, you know, Nintendo fans everywhere in different, you know, various groups uh, defending those games and, you know, pretty much bashing anyone who may be disappointed in those games. They don't see the problem. Like, what's what's the problem? You know, fans. You know, just being usual complaining bitches that they that they are. Right. That's what I've been seeing, and that's what I've been hearing. So I'm going to explain to you guys the actual problems with with these games because there are objective, objective problems with those two games, amongst others, and they tie in with the biggest problem plaguing Nintendo right now. You know what that problem is? The biggest problem that is hurting Nintendo is that not only have they lost the, you know, general, typical hardcore gamer, but they're also losing Nintendo fans. Now, this may not be anything new. Some of you guys may have realized this from the, you know, the get-go, from the start. But I don't think that many people have actually said this and brought this to attention. But Nintendo is losing their own core audience. So we thought it was bad with, you know, the lack of third-party support and the inability to get the Xbox or the PS4 gamer, you know, on board with the Nintendo platforms. But Nintendo fans themselves, and, and some, some of these guys are some of the hardest Nintendo fans that I've seen. The most hardcore, right? Leaving Nintendo. Tons of people. No way I'm buying the NX at launch. After the Wii U. A lot of these people I've seen say this. I know have bought a Nintendo system at launch. Every single generation. I've seen so many people. Talk about they're done with Nintendo. Over. Done. I'm just going to buy a Sony platform. Or I'm just going to get a PC. And that's it. And some these are some of the most hardcore Nintendo dudes that I've known. Over the years. I've been on here on YouTube since 2008 people. <laughs> it's been 8 years. So when I'm saying that I've seen a lot of people, I'm not, you know, just this typical random dude. Oh, I've seen, you know, four or five. I've seen thousands upon thousands upon thousands. So when I'm saying this, it's a pretty significant number. Keep that in mind. And part of the reason why Nintendo is losing their own core fan base is because of things like Sticker Star and Federation Force. And that's what you guys don't get. That's what you're not understanding. You guys are acting like nothing is wrong with these games. Uh, these games aren't a detriment when they are. Because guys, since since after the Super Nintendo days, Nintendo really hasn't been doing that great when it comes to uh, sales and user base, install base. N64 only sold over 30 million, which isn't like the worst thing, but nothing compared to what the NES and Super Nintendo sold, right? GameCube sold 20 million. The Wii... They got lucky the Wii Remote caught on and the casuals bailed them out that generation. But as Nintendo has seen themselves, as Miyamoto stated himself, you know, casuals ain't loyal. So that shit's just going to be temporary success. You know what I'm saying? They'll move on in a, in a second. So at the end of the day, yeah, it made them a lot of money. But in the long run, didn't do them any favors because now we're at the Wii U with only 13 million units sold, right? So really, Nintendo has had almost four generations of... Uh, just a shrinking install base when it comes to the hardcore gamer, right? When it comes to the hardcore Nintendo fan, they've been shrinking the, their user base, their install base, for four generations now. Four generations. And yes, every generation has had uh, mostly different reasons. But definitely, this generation for sure, the main problem is 
when it comes to Nintendo fans leaving the fold is the games themselves as well as, you know, um, you know, the Wii U not getting things that are standard in pretty much any other smart device out there. <laughs> you know, simple stuff. You can't even play music on the thing, which isn't a, nece a necessity to gaming. No, but people like to have an all-in-one box. And when you, can, when you have watches these days that can play music, your game console should be able to do it. You know, just say an example. I personally don't care for, again, I'm just giving an example of the things that have been deterring people away from Nintendo and especially the Wii U. But for those of you who just can't understand the problem with Federation Force, you just can't understand the problem with Paper Mario Color Splash. I think that's the subtitle. I don't freaking remember. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me explain this to you. Imagine a Mario Kart game with no items. Imagine a Mario Kart game with no item boxes. Imagine that. And then also imagine a 2D Mario platformer that's photorealistic and um, instead of, you know, mushrooms and the fire flower, he hits a block and a Glock comes out and he picks up the Glock and he starts shooting the troopers and it's kind of like bloody and gory and stuff. Now, jokes aside, you know, you would say that's stupid and you wouldn't want that. What would you say? You would say, that's not Mario, right? Having a gritty Mario, that wouldn't be Mario, right? That wouldn't be the series. That'd be something else. It sounds like a lot of like fan-made you know, videos and parodies that are on YouTube that you can see, right? So you guys can say that with the photorealistic gritty Mario idea, but you can't see the same thing when it's applied to Federation Force. It's the exact same thing, and that's what you guys aren't realizing. And, you know, yeah, graphics aren't everything in games. When it comes down to it, gameplay is most important. But, when specifically here, because this is a specific case when it would, it would go to be the same thing with many other games, but when you have a game like Metroid, guys, what is... You know, half of the reason why we love Metroid. What is one of the most main appealing things that Metroid has? It is the graphics, right? It's the aesthetics. It's the atmosphere. That's all part of the Metroid experience. The, you know, the darker art style and, you know, the um, old, you know, archaic relics. You know, when you're, you're running around and, you know, it's a lot of the places in Metroid games are, you know, like old, you know, civilizations or, you know, places that used to be populated, you know, stuff like that. You know, cool alien, you know, architecture and all this, right? That is all part of the Metroid experience. Because the main, one of the biggest selling points of Metroid, one of the biggest reasons why people love Metroid is the atmosphere. So, when it comes to the Metroid series, when it comes to the Metroid franchise... Yes, it is a big deal that Federation Force has the art style that it has because it's not Metroid. You don't get a feeling of ambience. You don't get the feeling of, of isolation. None of that in that game. It looks like you're playing a Saturday morning cartoon and that is not Metroid. So again, you guys, you know, the, the, the typical Nintendo fan always argues against, you know, the typical... You know, st uh, stupid Sony or Microsoft fan, right? When they're like, oh, Nintendo needs to make their uh, franchises, you know, uh, more adult and stuff like that, right? And people are always like, you know, the Nintendo fans are always, that's stupid. No, that w it wouldn't be these games. Nintendo doesn't need to make these, uh, their franchises all, you know, gritty and more adult and mature and stuff because it, it wouldn't be those games. It runs in this other direction as well, people. <laughs> if you have a kid-friendly, you know, cartoony, funny-looking, you know, series... It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, what, what's the term look for? It doesn't need to be, uh, you know, changed into a, a, a realistic, serious, grave tone, you know, type thing. And it's the other way around as well. If you have something that is already serious and grave, you don't tonify it like that either. You don't. It works the exact same way. You can't do that. So I just find it funny how you guys, you know... You, you use that logic against these, you know, PlayStation and, and, you know, Xbox guys. No, these franchises don't need to be turned to this gritty, mature crap. But you're okay with actual grittier stuff being turned into potato wedges. Potato wedges. Federation Force, the characters look like potato wedges. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Now that, of course, was all talking about Federation Force for the most part. But um, you know, uh, the whole item box thing I talked about Mario Kart. That's that was tied in with Paper Mario. Because here's the here's the crazy thing. I can't believe a lot of Nintendo fans aren't getting this. They're defending this game. They're calling people stupid for uh, being disappointed in it. Let me spell this out for you since you guys just can't understand it. You just don't see what's actually happened with the Paper Mario series with Sticker Star and this upcoming game for Wii U. It is an RPG that doesn't have experience points. What the fuck? Do you, real do you realize this? How do you not realize it's an RPG that doesn't have experience points? That sentence makes no sense. There's no true progression. Yeah, you get stronger, uh, you know, stickers, whatever. I'm sure this game is going to get stronger. Peyton hammers, whatever the heck they're doing, you know, as the game goes on. But that's not character progression. That's just getting a stronger equipment when you go throughout the game. But that's not making your actual character stronger. Partners are gone. It's not what the series used to be. And I just don't understand how you guys can't see this. I'm not saying you guys have to hate it, hate these things, along with the rest of the fan base. And I say the rest of the fan base because I'm not a Paper Mario fan. Uh, you know, I've played, you know, a few of them, but I wouldn't consider myself a fan of the series. Matter of fact, I only own two of them. One is one of which is the one on Wii. And I also unfortunately bought Sticker Star because I thought it was an RPG, but boy was I wrong. Now I have played the other ones, but I don't own them, is what I'm saying. But um I don't understand how you guys can be so blind to this. How you don't understand. You, you, don't, you don't. It's like you guys don't actually take the time to sit there and analyze these games. And, hmm, are there actual legitimate reasons as to why a fan of this series would be turned off by this? But no, you guys don't think that. You don't think objectively. You guys have some kind of deep-rooted emotional attachment to, to this company. So when your brain can't think objectively, your automatic go-to response is defense mode. You turn your card sideways. That's that's all you know how to do. You need jerk defensive reactions. You can't stop and think, empathize, think objectively. You can't do any of that. You just automatically go into defense mode because you just see your favorite company uh, being criticized. And for some reason, that bothers you, which I just don't understand. And you know what the crazy thing is, is that, you know, you guys can't see this logic with video games. You guys can't see this logic with your favorite, uh, you know, video game companies. And this isn't just Nintendo fans. This goes for everybody, right? But the funny thing is, is if you were to apply the logic in any other kind of form of, of media or, or social thing or business, right? Then you guys be able to see it. But for some reason, when it comes to video games, you don't understand it. And what, 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 what do I mean? Let, let me explain to you what, I, what I'm saying with that. I'm sure a lot of you Nintendo fans out there right now talking about stop bitching about Paper Mario Color Splash and, you know, Federation Force, you know, what's the problem? You guys are just spoiled and, you know, all that, right? I'm sure every single one of you out there, there is something else that you are a fan of that's not a video game series that has been tampered with and butchered and you've hated. You see what I mean? Movies, for instance, is a perfect example. I'm sure there's some movie series, some movie franchise that came out and you're like, this isn't the series that I know. This isn't the franchise that I know. What the heck? That character is not supposed to be black. That character is supposed to be white. You know, stuff like that. Why did they uh, make her his girlfriend? That was supposed to be his girlfriend. Why did they give him this ability? That's not his abilities. You know, stuff like that. I'm sure, and you can't deny that. You know I'm, you know I'm hitting, you you know I'm hitting somewhere right now. There is some facet in your life. There is something you like in your life. There is some something that is your favorite in some form of media, whatever, right? That has been changed or tampered with that you don't like. So think about what that thing is for you, and just apply it over to video games. Apply it over to Nintendo. Bam. Now you should be able to understand what the criticism is about. For instance, I've seen a lot of people complaining about the new Ghostbusters movie. Why is it all women when, you know, the Ghostbusters were all men? For instance, right? Um, I know a lot of Nintendo fans, uh, you know, we like um, Avatar. 
the Avatar series, the anime series, Avatar The Last Airbender, right? I'm sure you guys saw that last Airbender movie made by Shamalama Ding Dong, right? You hated it, didn't you? It was a butchery. It was a mockery of what we loved, right? It's the same thing that's happening with Metroid. And it's the same thing happening with Paper Mario. And it's, goes, it's in the same lines of, you know, what uh, Nintendo did with Animal Crossing. Instead of making an Animal Crossing for Wii U, which would have greatly helped the sales, right? They gave us an Amiibo Festival, right? So, like, they've, they've shat on multiple fan bases. In such a short amount of time, it is ridiculous. I have a bug on my wall over here. What the fuck? Oh, here, I killed it. Um, <laughs> do you see what I am saying? Imagine you go to, I like to do restaurant analogies all the time. Imagine you go to a restaurant and your favorite dish, you know, gets changed. They change the ingredients or something. And, and you know, it's just, it's crazy to have to explain this because it's so simple and it should be common sense. It should be something that is commonly understood. But for some reason, it's not. And I don't understand why. But it's like being a restaurant owner. It's like, hmm, people really like that dish. Let's take the seasoning off it. Does that make sense? No, of course you would say that doesn't make sense. But that's exactly what Nintendo was doing with the Paper Mario series. That's exactly what they're doing with the Metroid series. I, how do you not understand that? And, and things like that are the reason why that Nintendo's core fan base is shrinking. Yes, Nintendo does need to focus on getting third-party support. They do need to focus on getting the general gamer back. But a lot of, enough people don't talk about this, but they also need to work on getting Nintendo fans back as well because even Nintendo fans have left them. I'm not talking about a couple. I'm not talking about a few. I'm not saying, oh, something I've, I've just now been seeing, you know, here and there. No, this has been going on for a while now, and they are leaving in droves. And that is not good because for the last four generations, like I pointed out, Minus the, the Wii, I guess. The core Nintendo fan base is all Nintendo had, right? That's all they've had. We have solely been carrying them throughout all these years. The hardcore Nintendo fan who will keep coming back for the Mario games and the Metroid games and the Zelda games. And, you know, the few new IPs they make that generation. But mostly, you know, those series, right? So, Nintendo, if you continue to tamper with these series and just do what you want with these series... You're hurting yourself. And the only people who are down with you are going to completely leave you. Now, I understand, guys. I get it. It's their games. Yes, legally speaking, they could do what they want with it. Morally speaking, not so much. And if you think about it, it doesn't even make sense from a business standpoint. How, how effective is your argument that it's their series, they can do what they want? It's their vision. Well, how, how good of an argument is that, though, if their vision is going to make the game sell less? Like, what's the point of it at that point? You see what I'm saying? What is the point of having their vision of them wanting to do their gimmicky stuff and taking all this stuff away if it's just going to be detrimental to them? If it's just going to make people hate the series more? If it's not what made us love the series in the first place? What is the point? And that's the thing you guys got to understand. The things that we love about these games in the first place are being taken away. That is not good. And yes, we are entitled. And we should be able to expect those same core things to be in these games. If Nintendo makes a series, makes a franchise, makes a game, we love everything about it. It sells four million. You keep those same things that made it sell four million. You see what I mean? You don't take those things away. It doesn't make sense. It just doesn't. You don't do that. You don't. Imagine if you're a Xenoblade fan. If any of you guys are Xenoblade fans out there, imagine they made Xenoblade 3, right? But they made it like Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> they made it a, a corridor RPG. You'd be like, what the heck is this? Right? <sighs> imagine they made a Final Fantasy game and it had no EXP. So that's what they did with Paper Mario. This sounds ridiculous, right? That's exactly what they've done. <laughs> an RPG without EXP. An RPG without, like, character customization and character building. Like, it just, it does, uh, that just kind of doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't. I know it's not a, it's not a typical RPG, you know. It's not like a, a, a mainline, like, you know, kind of thing. But it, it, it still had... A EXP, it still had partners, you know, party members, stuff like that, and that's just gone now. Be just cause. 
no actual good reason just because Nintendo wants to focus on gimmicky crap that's not going to do them any favors in the long run. We don't want paint and all this crap in our in our you know Paper Mario games. We don't want potato wedges in our Metroid games. And it's not even that we're against change. Don't don't get me wrong, guys. I'm not saying we want the exact same thing over and over again. I'm saying we want the core things back. And when, and I guess you could say, yeah, that, that kind of means the same thing. We do want the same thing over and over again. But it's not that we don't want anything new. We just want to make sure that the things that we loved about it in the first place, the things that made the series great in the first place, are still intact. They're still kept. They're still preserved throughout the iterations in that series. Nintendo, you can add all you want. Adding is fine. The problem is that you're taking away. Let me make sure that is clear, because I don't think I've said that yet in this entire video, and I'm probably at like 20 minutes now. Let me make sure that's clear. The problem isn't that they're adding. The problem is that for a lot of these games and franchises, they are taking away, and they're changing them, and they're altering them, and they're changing them in ways that shift the identity of the series. It's not the same series that we've, we've come to know and love. And I don't understand how you guys cannot see this. It is a problem. It needs to be fixed. No, we're not just we're not just these spoiled, uh, unjustified whiners. This is legitimate stuff. And like I said, if you're down with Federation Force, that's fine. I'm not saying you can't like these games. I'm not saying you can't like you know the Paper Mario game. I'm not saying you can't like Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. I'm not I'm not saying you can't like these games. What I'm saying is that you cannot not see the problem with them. You see what I mean? Because there are objective problems. It's not an opinionated matter. It's not. And like I said, I'm sure there's some avenue, some facet, um, facet of life, some hobby that you have that's been altered or, or changed or whatever that you did not disapprove of. And you said, that is not what I know. That is not what I know and love. There is something in your life you could say about that. I know there is. So why can't you apply that same logic with Nintendo? Anyways, um, I think for the most part, I talked long enough. But one last thing I want to add in. I don't want you guys to focus on this too much. It's just kind of like a little side point I'm, I'm throwing at the end. But not only, um, not only is one of the biggest problems with Nintendo is that people are leaving them because of what they're doing to their franchises. But uh, another problem that Nintendo is having is that they're not advancing a lot of their franchises either at the same time. And what do I mean by this? For instance, um, Star Fox Zero. I'm glad we got it, guys. You guys know me. I was begging for Star Fox for the longest. I'm going to buy Star Fox Zero day one. It looks fun. It's going to be a good game. But is it the next step in the Star Fox series? You see what I mean? No. Right? They're not really advancing it. They're not progressing the series along, both from really a gameplay uh, standpoint and a story standpoint. And it's kind of disappointing because, you know, a lot of Nintendo franchises aren't story focused. They're not story based. They don't have much actual lore going on. And so when you see a series like Star Fox that actually does have lore and a lot of backstory and you see Nintendo unwilling to actually make a, a continuity of this, continue it, keep it going on, you know, it's kind of disappointing. So that's another reason why a lot of Nintendo fans just kind of like look at Nintendo and just like, ah, I'm just, I'm just tired because, um, a lot of the games that we've got in this generation, you know, including Star Fox Zero, you know, they're, they're, they don't feel like the next big thing in the series. They don't feel like the next step. They don't feel like the series is progressing. Um, I felt that way, that way with 3D World as well. You know, when we were from 64, Sunshine and Galaxy, it felt like evolutions, right? And then you go to 3D World. It was a great game, you know, definitely 9 out of 10. But um, the ambition that we felt when we played Galaxy wasn't there. You see what I mean? It didn't feel like the next big Mario. It was just kind of like the next Mario game, but it wasn't the next big step. It wasn't an evolution. It wasn't a leap when it comes to, you know, gameplay and ambition and creativity. You see what I mean? That's another thing. Um, I don't know if you guys feel that way, but that's something I felt um, really hard with this generation with the Wii Mario Kart 8 too. You know, I, don't, I didn't really feel like that was the next big step in the Mario Kart series. It was just a good Mario Kart game, but, you know, there, there wasn't an evolution. There wasn't a gap. There wasn't a leap. So I think that is another reason why Nintendo is losing Nintendo fans. And that's another thing that they need to resolve and get on. They need to be more ambitious with their titles. Um, but I'll talk long enough, guys. Let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later.